Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Sticky Note Marketing. I am your host, Mary Zarnecki. I am a marketing strategist and business transformation consultant. I love working with both big brands, big businesses, as well as smaller, scrappy startups and solopreneurs. So what this show is all about is giving you actionable tips each week that you can implement now to get more leads, more sales, and more impact from your marketing. So today's topic came from a few discussions that I had this week, and it came up not just for big businesses with big brands and big budgets, but also small businesses that are just starting up and in their first few years of operation. So as you're jumping on, drop in the comments below and let me know where you're watching from. I always like to know where everyone is in the world. I love how this interwebs thing connects us all no matter where we are. So the reason I want to talk about this topic, which is the three kinds of content that you need to have in your business in order to generate those leads and those sales and those connections, is because the content is pretty much our ability to create information that allows people to make decisions, right? They're making a decision A, whether they want to learn more about you. They're making a decision B, that you might be the person for them to solve their problem. And C, they're deciding whether or not you are going to be the one that they're going to invest their time, money, or energy with, right? So our content is the way that they learn about us, what we do, whether we're for them, and whether there's that connection, right? Whether they're for, you know, they're a connected uh, audience, they're an ideal target for you or not. So the three types of content that I wanted to talk about today are basically related to the customer journey. So if you've listened to any of my trainings before, you know that I really harp and teach this idea of that not everyone that is coming into your world is going to be what we call a now buyer. So when someone comes in contact with you, whether they land on your Facebook page, they connect with you in a Facebook group, they see a webinar of yours, they sign up for a freebie and end up on your email list, however they first come in contact with you, they may or may not be a now buyer. So by now buyer, I mean they are willing to pull the trigger and make an investment right now. The vast majority of people that are going to come into contact with your brand and your business at the first stage aren't necessarily going to be able to, to or ready to make a purchase right then and there, right? So they're going to need some nurturing. They're going to need to build that relationship with you. They're going to need to figure out who you are, what you're about, and whether or not it's a good match for what they need. So here's why we then map these three specific types of content to this customer journey. Because as people are coming into your world, if they're now buyer, fantastic, great, don't have to worry about that, they jump right to the sales stage. But if they're one of those people that are coming into your world and they're not a now buyer, we need to nurture them. So let's break this down. If we're talking about the very beginning of this relationship, right, the stranger, this is what we call a cold audience, and they're coming into contact with you, they're finding out you exist for the first time, that's your first type of content. You need some sort of content that's going to meet them where they're at. At this stage, you're just starting the conversation with them. They don't really care about you. They don't really care about your story. And they don't really care about what we call in professional marketing, the reasons to believe, which is all of the functions and features and special ingredients and special, special methodology and the fact you've been in business since, you know, 1421 BC. You know, they don't care about that yet. What they care about is what's keeping them up at night. So your first type of content that you're putting out regularly has to be matched to that phase, that very beginner conversation, that first date kind of conversation. And the content that you create for this stage needs to meet them where they are now, what's going on in their head, what kind of words are they using to describe themselves, their experience, their problem, and the solution that they want, right? The solution that they're hoping you might be able to provide them or someone might be able to provide them. So that's your first type of content is you need to have content out there, whether it's video, blogs, um, easy access things, um, things where they can see that you get what's going on in their head, that, they, that you get them period. <laughs> so that's the first stage of content, meeting them where they're at, entering the conversation that's going on in their head. And that matches to the beginning of that stage, the beginning of the relationship that you're forming with your audience. Now, the second type of content is going to be that middle type of content that, okay, they figured out you exist. You said something that connected with where they at, where they're at now. They feel like you understand them. And so they're like, hmm, okay, I want to learn a bit more. I want to see what this person is about or what this business is about or what kind of ways that they work with their clients or customers. 
So then you have content in the middle of this kind of customer journey that is speaking into then how you work and how you help people that look like them. So this is your opportunity to share things like testimonials and case studies and stories about either your journey or journeys of clients and customers that you've worked with or what the experience is like. So if you uh, have watched any of my trainings before, sometimes I talk about my husband. So he's a restaurant owner and chef. And one of the things that he always shares with me is that it's not just about the food, but it's about the experience. And when someone is deciding whether or not to eat at his restaurant or really any restaurant, they almost want to understand what the experience is going to be like before they walk in the door. Because what is the most awkward thing is if you walk into a restaurant, you sit down, you look at the menu and you take a sip of your water and then you're like, I really don't like the vibe or I don't like the feeling or I don't even like anything that's on this menu. And then you have to like leave. I don't know if anyone's ever done that before. If you've done that before, drop me a funny emoji below. But you don't want to do that, right? And you don't want to do that with any purchase or commitment you make, whether it's time, money, or energy. You want to feel secure that if you make the investment to do something, to buy something, to go somewhere, that you're going to like the experience. So people want to almost experience it before they get there or before they buy from you. So this part of the content is sharing with them what the experience is going to be like, giving them the confidence that they understand, okay, this is what it's going to feel like, smell like, taste like, what if you're a coach, like if you're a health coach, this is what other people who look like me have had the experience and they've done it before. What was their experience like? Because then I can say, okay, my experience is probably going to be similar. So that's that second type of content is give them the idea of what the experience is going to be like and what kind of outcomes they can expect. All right, now we're moving them along the journey with this type of content. We've brought them into our world. We met them where they're at. We entered the conversation that was going on in their heads, all about them, 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 right? And then we shared the idea of, okay, well, here's where we could go. This is what happens with people like you. Okay, now they're really in that consideration. They're deciding, hmm, do I want to buy from this person? Am I going to make the commitment, right? The financial commitment to get value from them and then give value in return. So that third type of content is going to be when they're making that purchase decision. So hopefully by this point, you've made that emotional connection. Now, they might have emotionally already made the decision that, yes, I want to do this. But then what happens? Our critter brains, our inner oldest part of our brains come in and it's it doesn't like change. It's scared of anything. And it's scared of this investment that they're trying to make. So what it does is it sets up all of these objections, right? What it might be called, you know, false beliefs or limiting beliefs or any any kind of objections are going to come to mind. And so in this third type of content, you need to handle those objections. So there are probably two, three, four, five different objections that you might hear regularly from buyers or potential prospects. So those you need to actually go out and pre-solve for people. Now, a lot of people I work with are really <laughs> reticent to go out and talk about things that are objections. They're like, well, if I don't bring it up, maybe they won't bring it up and then I won't have to deal with it. I hate to break it to you, but that's just not going to happen. These objections are going to come up and you want to tackle them head on. So if you can tackle them out in your content, whether it's in video or blogs or writing on your website, whatever it is, but having those resources out there to help people get over those objections before or as they're making this purchase decision is going to lead to more conversions because now they know that you get them, that you can create results for people that look like them, and you're helping them break down those objections that are popping up from their critter brain. So those are the three types of content every business, no matter what size, whether you're a billion dollar brand or a small local business, has to have and has to be sharing consistently and getting out in front of your audience in order to create those leads those nurtured prospects, and then ultimately the buyers in your business. So if you are confused or if you want more information about this, I invite you to join us in my Facebook group. I'll put the link uh, below or above, depending where you're watching this. And I invite you to continue the conversation over there. It's a great uh, community of entrepreneurs at all stages of business, businesses of all different sizes and different niches and industries. But the idea is to be the most effective and strategic when it comes to your marketing and content creation. So wishing you the best in your business and luck and success always. Cheers, bye.